Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another fairly large ship, and I can't remember if this is a showcase request or not. I couldn't find the original link, but we're going to look at it anyway. So this is the ATT 422A1 Sparrow, which is this lovely thing right here. So it's a large troop transport ship featuring a lot of firepower, some very fancy scripts to unify them all together, and we've even got some very fancy landing gear underneath that'll tuck themselves all the way up inside the ship via a bunch of hinges, and then we've got some covers that'll just close up the gap, making it very neat and almost like they're not there. And we also have these weird little cows that I found on the workshop, they're very adorable, and yes there'll also be a link to them in the description below if you are interested in making your own ranch. For the ship itself, pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the Sparrow is 5,362 small blocks using the Wasteland Decorative Block Number 2 and Sparks of the Future DLC packs. And I've already given it a thumbs up, so we can move all the way around to the very front. We'll have a quick look around the outside. Then we'll go on the interior, have a look at that, then we'll fly around for a bit and I'll show off the landing gear and how it tucks away. So at the very front here, this is what we get. We've got four spies to light up the darkness with an ore detector and an antenna that can be put to a very good use. We've got two cameras to view out the front there so we can see what we're going to be shooting. And as we move up and above here, we're going to see a lot of Gatling guns and a lot of Gatling turrets. As we move around beside our bridge, we're going to see some rocket turrets, some iron thrusters. Then moving all the way across over to here, we've got ourselves a bunch of hydrogen thrusters and some more Gatling guns. Then moving all the way around the side here onto our wing, we've got some good use of the letter blocks saying 001. We've got a blinking red light and a bunch of sensor blocks which have all been set up for the lights on the ship. Moving all the way around over to here past that, we've got even more interior lights, even more hydrogen thrusters and a sneaky little atmospheric thruster sitting right there. Pulling away from that and coming over to here, we've got ourselves a little wing made out of two atmospheric thrusters to help us on a planet. Then moving all the way around to the very back of this thing, this is what we get. So we've got a bunch more iron thrusters, a bunch more hydrogen thrusters, and we can see even more atmospheric thrusters sitting right over there. We've got a laser antenna sitting at the back, and we've got this fancy little ramp to get in and out. We can use these yellow buttons to open and close the ramp, and there's also one on the interior so your troops can deploy the ramp as they please. Yes, as for the interior itself, we'll get a quick look inside here. There we go. So just coming out of that and moving all the way to the top of this vehicle, we can see even more atmospheric thrusters, even more hydrogen thrusters, even more turrets, and some nice use of the rounded yellow blocks, adding some extra decoration to the ship. Yes, as we move to the front there, we've got a parachute hats just in case we need it. Say we got blown up in combat when we need to safely land, we can try and rely on that and hope for the best. Yes, there's an O2H2 generator, we've got a connector at the front to charge this thing up, and we've got a camera there just to help you connect it up if you're docking to a station. Moving all the way down and past our bridge, there's even more Gatling guns, but even more hydrogen thrusters, and these are the landing gears, which are all being hinged up so they can fold all the way inside, and we can see hinges on the side there, which is how the covers are going to fold across and cover everything up. Moving towards the back there, there is the ramp, and that is it for the outside. So it's a very nice ship, there is a lot of detail going on there, and the turrets have been very well set up. I'll show you that a bit later once we get into the control seat, because it is quite fancy with how they all fire together, and will all aim together. She's grabbing hold of my character and getting off this cow. We're going to move to the ramp at the back here, and just hop on up. Just jumping up here, we can press the yellow button, which will start closing the ramp up. Then we can open the door, turn around, and there we go. We just close the door up. There is our lovely yellow button to deploy the ramp, in case we need to. Looking around this room, we've got some yellow hydrogen tanks to store all of our hydrogen in. And we've got a bunch of LCD screens with a load of scripts going on with them. So we've got frequencies, we've got our coordinates, we've got our ship integrity, we've got our artificial horizon and our time. And then on the opposite side, we basically got the same. As for the rest of the room, we've got a bunch of chairs going all the way around it for all your troops to sit on. Then moving towards the front here, we've got an LCD screen telling you the orders of the captains, which you'll need to fill in yourself. We've got some batteries going along the side here and a survival kit just to respawn on and to heal yourself up if you took damage. Moving towards the front here, these are our control seats to fly this thing around. Just a quick look behind us, we've got a remote control block, and we can see some cargo containers with a quick access to dump stuff in. 
Turning around and pressing this yellow button, this is going to be our startup sequence, which will tunnel all of our thrusters around the ship and we'll be ready to take off. Yes, yeah, just getting into this seat right here. This is going to be for our turrets and to control them all together. So pressing number one is going to be to unify our turrets all together with our central. So coming to here and pressing this, our rocket turrets and our Gatling guns will all come together and will fire together. So just coming to the third person and shooting again, you can see how everything is turning around, going up and down, left and right, including the ones at the back there. You might see them waving around there. There we go. So this is a very nice button. Coming back into my character and coming out of that, number three is going to be to decouple all the turrets so we can come back into here and now only one of them will fire. Then four and five is simply for manual control over our static weapons, which is going to be for the Gallingers on the side there. And then number five is for our rockets right next to our cockpit. So there we go. Coming out of that and coming into our main seat right here, looking in first person view, we've got a bunch of LCD screens with our radar scripts, artificial horizon, our fuel and power, speed and integrity. And getting a good view from the first person view, we can see a nice lot of stuff around us. So number one, two, three and four is going to be to turn on and off our thrusters all the way around the ship. So pressing number two to bring the hydrogen thrusters back on, we are now ready to fly this thing around. Number one is simply to turn off our atmospheric thrusters all the way around this ship. And number two is the same, but for the hydrogen thrusters, with number three being the same for the ion thrusters. Number four is for our cruise control, we'll turn off all of our hydrogen thrusters and ion thrusters at the front there. So if we were to move forwards, we'll simply glide along. Number five and number six is going to be for our landing gear, so we will need to just come off the ground here. Oop, we appear to be attached by one leg. There we go, we're now in the air, so we're just going to fly away so we don't kick up any dust below us. And now we're just going to get the free camera, bring it over to here, and press number five. So that'll start to tuck the legs all the way down and underneath, and it'll be very neatly tucked away inside there. And the covers will then fold all the way up, like so. And now we can't see them. For the moment, I'm just going to leave them tucked away so I can get back into my character and continue going through the hotbar. Number seven is for manual control over our parachutes to open and close. And number eight and number nine is for our landing sequence where number nine will switch off all of our thrusters around the ship and number eight will turn them all on. Coming to tab number two, we then got controls for our Gatling guns at the front there to shoot them forwards. And number two is to shoot our rockets. Number three is for manual control over our Gatling gun on top. There we go. And number four, five and six for the cameras around the ship. Number four is to view straight down where we can see our lovely cow in the top left. Number five is to view straight behind us. And number six is to view straight up where our connector is to help dock this thing up. And number seven is to simply lock and unlock our landing gear when we're ready to clamp ourselves down on the base and get out. Tab number three, four and five is empty. So it is time to fly this thing around and see how this handles. So moving forwards, this is what we get. We've got a nice lot of speed thanks to all of those large hydrogen thrusters and large atmospheric thrusters. Coming to a stop, we've got some great stopping speed and won't need to do a 180 to come to a stop. Moving left, and moving right, this is what we get. So we're fairly slow and we did just take damage on one of the blocks there, but it's not too much of a problem, in fact, that really shouldn't have taken damage there, I'm not too sure why that did. This that is something to watch out for, but not too much of a problem. Moving down, and then moving up because of some great speeds with that. Then we're getting my mouse around. We have got a lot of weight on here. It's a very heavy vehicle, but it does suit what this vehicle is trying to portray and what its purpose is for. You don't want to be too floaty, but could use maybe one or two more small gyroscopes to make it more responsive. Yes, as for that, that is pretty much it for the ATT422A1 Sparrow. That's a very big mouthful to say. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do because the landing sequence is very fancy. We can just open that up like so and the landing gear will come all the way out. There'll also be a link to the cow in case you want to play around with that. And one final thing, we'll just come and slam ourselves down straight into the ground. There we go. And what type of damage did we deal? Sitting all the way over to here. Not too much. We simply left a hole in the ground and we damaged our landing gear, but one of them did survive. So yes, like I said, there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. 
I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.